Orc be. smut. <laughs> Did you just say work smut? Orc. <laughs> Orc. It was recommended. As in Lord of the Rings Orc. But they're like hot. <laughs> I need to see some fan art for me to believe that. <laughs> That's right up there with the blue alien thing that went off during TikTok or during the pandemic. Oh, no. Scully brought up oh. some. What is that green, green one down okay, there with the titties? Let's stop looking at. <gasps> oh. oh, my goodness. Again, if you're not watching us on YouTube, oh, you boy. are missing out. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh. And on that note, welcome to Blood and Contracts. Hello. <laughs> episode 19. This is our last regular episode. Yeah. Before the finale. Second to last episode of the season. Wild. Our I penultimate love. episode. Oh, what a word. What a word. And it's still love month in this house. Mm. This will be airing February 12th. Happy February 12th. Hey. Two days away from the day of love. And we're still going to be talking about lovey things, but today we're talking about self-love, relationship to self, and self-care. But first, we're going to do a couple other things. Yeah. But hi, how are you? I was vibing with myself <laughs> in my own brain. She's playing a little song. Yep. Which song were you playing in your head, Kelly? Come and get your love. love. Yeah. Excuse me. Cute. Hey. I would like some Renaissance resolution updates. Mm. I'll go first and kick us off. Sure. Guys, I came with an alliteration. Of course. I wouldn't expect anything else. My <laughs> Renaissance resolutions were not vibing because yeah. they were not in an alliteration. Here it is. Okay. The brand, the body, the book. Ugh. I mean. Wow. Come on. I love it. We hit over 100,000 views on our YouTube, on Blooded Contracts YouTube, a couple episodes ago. So at this point, hey, maybe we're at 200,000 on February 12th. That would be fantastic. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. We are going to be doing some aggressive content strategies in between seasons. So get ready. We're not going silent. We're not going dark. We're not taking time off. We're just not going to be filming the actual show. We're going to be pre prepping for season two in the coming months after our season one finale. Uh, and we'll be working on Contract Kitchen and whatever else we dream up and want to work on. Uh, speaking of things that we're dreaming up and working on. I'll save it for my resolution. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Put mm -hmm. your no nose goes. Mm -hmm. Kelly and I kicked off the last couple of weeks our iPad downloadable side business mm -hmm. slash project yeah. that's attached to Virgo and Co. But it's our own little little design world we get to live in. And it's so fun getting to play with you. And we just recently did a branding brainstorm, yeah. name, naming brainstorm to just kind of see what's bubbling up. Also, on that note, I need to talk to you about the word ampersand and what that resonates, if anything, in you. I love an ampersand. I do, too. I, I maybe there's something there. Anyways... I think we both have the same metal we do. one in our... Oh, okay, yeah. I was looking at it and I was like, I have that same one. She has that same one. Maybe it means something. What if we got our blood and contracts in Brazil? Tattoo? Tattooed. Maybe, eventually. When we hit... <laughs> I'm pure. I know. I don't have any tattoos. Do you not want one? I don't know. Okay. It would I have to I be really it. special and really yeah. something I really wanted to get another one because I already want to take the one tattoo I have off of my body. Mm. So. You only have the one? Oh, yeah. Her butt heart. My butt heart. It's such a cute... Ass heart. It is. Uh, that's n Honestly, it's nice of you that you guys keep saying butt heart because um, my mother likes to call it the dick heart because it looks like balls. I'll take a picture. I'll put it on the TikToks. I don't but think it looks But it looks like, like a pair like of balls. balls. I mean, yeah, maybe if you're looking at it upside, upside down. Upside down. Yeah. Anyways, uh, <laughs> iPads. Yeah. Uh, so then this first couple of months, Kelly and I are, are in research and discovery mode, and that's been really fun. I love research and discovery mode because you kind of just 
you get to see what the marketplace has and what it's missing. And yeah. there's a lot that it's missing for the things that we want to build. So I'm very excited about that. Also, we talked about this a little bit in the last episode. I wanted to kind of put it up on stage this episode, but Contract Kitchen is another new venture for Blood and Contracts. It's on the Blood and Contracts YouTube. It will be an additional show to everything else that we post. We saw a need that Bon Appetit Test Kitchen left yeah. in its wake, this emptiness in our hearts. And you know what? I think we're pretty fun to watch. Mm -hmm. So why not cook things and have fun with the people we love and make mistakes in the kitchen together? It's pretty fun. Because boy, do I make them. Ditto. We made the <laughs> entire house smell like fried oil for a good 48 hours at this point. Uh, <laughs> we're learning Sorry. things. But yeah, the it's dissipated. It's getting there. Slightly. Yeah. The brand is branding and it's very mm -hmm. exciting. The body. I have been hitting my movement goals every single day of January like a freaking boss. Go. I have hit 10,000 steps every single day without even really trying, which is really exciting. And then my best friend Brandon and I, he's moving into a new apartment and the apartment has a luxury gym. It is it's nice. state of the art. It has an entire Pilates yoga room what? with brand new mats. It has rower machines, it has Peloton-like mm -hmm. bikes, mirrors, and then in the weights room, I I was drooling. There's so there's a whole Smith machine in there, which is very expensive. Yeah. And blew my mind. And a oh. whole set of dumbbells. So we are having a damn great time at the gym. Thank you, Brandon, for paying an ungodly amount of money for that apartment. I love you. Uh, <laughs> but this apartment complex is brand new, and it's only at 30% capacity, so no one is there. Yeah. Mm. Delightful. Oh, sorry. I woke up, Archie. Uh, yeah. So I'm just, it's the only thing in my life that I truly can control the outcome of. So I've been diving in to the body. The book. I mentioned in the last episode that I got the chance to meet up with, not meet up, but have a FaceTime date with my friend Amy in Washington. And unexpectedly, we both had been writing and have some writing goals and dreams for the year. So we're mm -hmm. going to be keeping each other accountable for those goals, okay. which is really nice to have someone who knows me and loves me also have a piece of that journey with me. Mm -hmm. We haven't formalized anything. The only thing that I've done in the last two weeks when it comes to the book is I've put together a potential page writing a uh, plan so Ooh. however many pages I need to write in each quarter to get to where I want to get by the end of the year mm -hmm. and I came up with a book idea and I'm not ready to tell you about it oh okay but I'm excited hold it in I'm holding it in we'll wait. Ter astrology wise I have been told by the cards to not blab my mouth about this mm -hmm. creative project just yet yeah okay. I need to put some work in some silo work into it before I Start talking. Yeah. So that's my Renaissance resolution updates. Kelly. Thank you. Pick it up. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so profesh. Being kinder to myself. Yeah. I feel like maybe I've been a little, I haven't done anything special to like say anything kind <laughs> to myself, whether it's putting up little notes of yeah. kind thoughts and words for myself to read throughout the day wherever yeah. I'm going. But I don't feel like I've noticed myself necessarily saying too many negative things mm -hmm. directed at myself. But mm -hmm. I haven't heard you call yourself stupid or an oh. idiot oh. this weekend. Yeah. Or in our I meetings. Just felt it mm -hmm. internally. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> just kidding. Um, so I feel like I'm on a good path to thinking better of myself. Yeah. And good. we love that. Would you say you're becoming more cognizant? Mm -hmm. Perhaps. Get out. Mindful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just more self-aware, I think. And yeah. I, mm -hmm. I feel like the self-awareness is what I'm trying to bring into this year for myself in different areas of right. my life. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Fun. My year of health, Um, my eyes are finally mm. crispy. A okay Crispy. In a good way. In not, a good way. Not blurry. Yeah. yeah. I finally don't have blurry vision for the first oh time gosh. since December. And we love that. Thank you know? God. They're not cloudy anymore. Not cloudy. Oh, not blurry. They don't hurt. 
Yay. On the up and up. Yay. I also had to do, for our insurance, we have to do a physical. Sort right. Of, like, mm-hmm. it used to be going to get a full blood draw. Now I can just go do the minute clinic prick, prick of my finger. And yeah. I did that the other week. And my blood work all came back really right. well. The only Thanks. thing I need to work on is my good cholesterol. So I'll needs, take that. You need more of it. I need more of it. Yeah, I'm just good fats. slightly below. Yeah. yeah, good fats to do some cardio, get the heart pump in, mm-hmm. which I can do. Yeah. And I'll take it. I still need to continue in the journey of figuring out what's going on with my body just yeah. in general. But I was glad that all of that at least came back well. That's a lot of progress good. for month one of the year. Yeah. And the month isn't even over. Yeah, we're Love doing it. it. Yay. Um, self-care, I'm not going to touch on just because that is what the episode is. And yep. I feel like I will touch on that later on. So yes. to be continued. Yes. And reading more. I'm reading more. I'll talk about that in book club. In this episode. In this episode. Yep. So a lot of my <laughs> goals are things that we're all doing as a group. So yeah. Which I love. Yeah. Which makes my, it a little more teamworky. Yeah. A little teamwork. Okay. The comfortable you. goal of the booty. No progress has been made. It is still a pancake. However. I mean, it's been two weeks. <laughs> I just was feeling like I had a lot on my plate work-wise, pod-wise yeah. this past couple. So I haven't in, been in the mindset to move my body a ton, which is last episode where I was saying my lower back, I think, was hurting a bit. Yeah. But I'm optimistic that I'm going to start. I did do some yoga last week. Nice. So, um. But yeah, move my body. I need to get, I need to set up some sort of regimen for myself of Mm -hmm. how to do squats during the day. I saw, uh, I think it was a Pinterest thing years ago where they were like, every time you have to go to the bathroom or something, every time you have to do something repetitive throughout the day (laughs) to do a squat, like 10, 20 squats Mm. at that time. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm going to go brush my teeth. Yeah. While you do brush your teeth. Yeah. At first, I thought you were saying to do squats while you go to no, the no, bathroom. No. That feels like separate a, activities. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's like that might get complicated but and messy. <laughs> yeah. Find something in your life that you do repetitively throughout the day and then attach it. I'm sorry. I just started picturing squats and peeing. Squats and dress. Messy. Yeah. <laughs> that's Don't not, know. that's great. I've seen something similar. So yeah, I just need to figure out how I want to fit it into my day yeah. today and get my body moving and stuff. So, and like in it. positive ways where you don't feel like you're punishing yourself, mm-hmm. that it's just part of routine. There is that it takes two weeks to make a habit, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I always say it takes three weeks to make it actual routine, to make it in your brain this thing that you have, not that you have to do, but that you want to do because mm-hmm. you know what it equals yeah at the end of the day for me it's if I work out it means I get to sleep naturally you know (laughs) that I don't have to get high out of my mind to be able to sleep that my Mm -hmm. brain will just naturally shut off because it got enough endorphins that day yeah yeah cool so quick one quick one booth of my uh resolutions what a thought with a thought healthy my whole brain just blacked out yep cool not when you're talking just oh. when you asked me what mine are oh <laughs> yes what are yours i can't remember either uh-huh well uh-huh. your living journey, health living, journey, situation. living situation uh-huh. and reading. reading uh-huh we're gonna talk about reading <laughs> um living situation i've got got some leads progress a little bit of progress uh health sure uh use my walking pad that's mm-hmm. about it yeah um, get my steps in although i never you never see it logged because we all share on like watch fitness yeah um but you never see it logged because i take my watch off as soon as i get home from work oh so well you're still doing it yeah um how yeah. is your journey to finding a gp going i have downloaded the app you mentioned two weeks ago Sock doc. <laughs> okay Progress. Gotta start somewhere. Yes. Uh-huh. Now yeah. we have to open the app. 
Yeah. And then you got to log in uh-huh. and then put in your information. I think I opened the app, started searching, and then realized I needed to put my health insurance yes. information in. And I went, oh, that's in the other room. And I put I'll do this down. later. And then I did not do this later. Yeah. So yeah, I yeah. just like every time I swipe to that, that page of my phone, I'm like, eh, I should back. do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I need to find a GP too. So yeah, there you go. We're going well, to t- I'll ask. Yeah. Make going. it an Asana task. <laughs> yes. <No>. Stupid. <laughs> Project manage your life. Oh, God. <laughs> you wish. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah. I just, I, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. okay. That's okay. Yeah. Hey, mm-hmm. let's talk about book club then, because okay. that is part of both of your guys' resolutions. Yeah. I finished Iron Flame. Halsey is reading Iron... Wait, no, what's the first I one? I started Fourth Wing. She started Fourth Wing. I finished Iron Flame last week. It was... I taught one of my other... Updates was that I met with my friend Bree, who is my book buddy. Mm-hmm. She also read it and we unpacked it together. Mm-hmm. Loved the combo with her about that. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm 11% into Fourth Wing. And you like it already? Yes. Nice. Well, I'm on chapter five. So, so Bree intro- reintroduced me to the fantasy book mm-hmm. world with Akatar, mm-hmm. A Court of Thorns and Roses for our book talk friends. I ate it up loved it the whole series obsessed i have now read sarah j mass's like other worlds mm-hmm. which spoiler alert eventually will all come together Ooh. in the end interesting but what we do not know is the time periods that they are all around they're all in different dimensions yeah. so you don't we none of us can figure out how they're all going to come together but eventually they will all come together there are little Easter eggs throughout all of her books of other characters from other Ooh. series, which is really cool. Wow. But her books are so detailed, especially the Cre- they're, the Crescent City series, which is one of her newer series, is extremely detailed. And yet all of her little obsessed people have Mm -hmm. been finding all the little linkages to all the all of her other books so it's very interesting it's a cool world but uh i love brie for reintroducing that to me it's good stuff yeah uh so i finished that read it on audible started barbara streisand's book Mm -hmm. i'm obsessed we love, obsessed. we love a Babs. She reads, she voices her own book, obviously, mm-hmm. and it's a chunky book. Yeah. It's like she's right next to you. Mm-hmm. She does her, she has little ums and ahs in there and likes, and it feels like you're having a conversation with her. It's so wild. And then the producers of the audiobook also layered in uh, music that she referenced or songs that she references oh, and the cool. actual recordings of when she's talking about it at like the beginning of her career. Oh. Like there's one song that she sings in a audition that eventually gets put into a show and they have the recording from the audition. They play like a little snippet when she's talking about it. It's That's so really cool. freaking cool. So Ugh. if you are at all interested in Barbara Streisand, even a little bit, or if you're a theater kid, this would be a great book for you. And I highly recommend reading it on Audible because she's iconic. Iconic. Yeah. Her voice is iconic. Yeah. She's so nice to listen to because she's mm-hmm. got that raspy Jewish New York Jew voice. Mm. Uh, I just love her. And it's a delight. It's on my list. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to need to add it to yeah. my list. Please do. I love a musician's yes. autobiography. Yeah. And she has the added benefit of being... A superstar and yeah. an actress. Yeah, she's an egot too. Mm-hmm. Emmy, Grammy, awesome. Oscar, Tony, the OG, the goat. My favorite autobiographies I've ever like listened to or read have all mostly been musicians. Musicians, that's like fun. Dave Grohl's, Brandy oh. Carlile's. Dave Grohl's book was fantastic. Yeah, I uh, am obsessed with Brandy Carlile, but her book was also really good. Got all- Add it to the list. Our yeah. February book. Or our next book club, Mm -hmm. truly, has to be A Court of Thorns and Roses. (laughs) Because it's love month, and I saw a TikTok that sold it for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Miss Brittany Bronski. Yeah, her bawling her eyes out reading the last book. Bawling her eyes out over Court of Silver Flames. She is that 
kooky quirky tiktoker we followed a couple of times i'll yeah. we'll watch it tonight okay but she's she's been reading the series and talking about it she has a big podcast yeah she's been talking about it on her podcast i'm like mm-hmm. okay if britney's reading it halsey can read it <laughs> no because you love no, her and you I respect do. her no i do i, I respect her opinions and face. she's obsessed yeah and she wants to have sarah j mass on her show <gasps> yeah I would die. Yeah. So fun. So if you want to read along with us, we're going to start with The Court of Thorns and Roses in the middle of February. That's the first book? That's the first book. Okay. It is a light retelling of The Beauty and the Beast, which is why it's a great book. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. It's my favorite Disney movie for anybody. Who cares? <laughs> uh, so it'll be our February, March book. See you on Book Talk. Yeah. Okay. What was the book you pitched? She pitched another one, which I think we should still keep on our list because it sounds delish. It's called The Keeper of Enchanted Rooms. Mm-hmm. And uh, let me pull up the Rhode Island, 1846. Estranged from his family writer, Merritt Fernsby. Fernsby, whatever. Is surprised when he inherits a remote estate in the this bay. That's a long word that I can't pronounce. <laughs> Um, though the property has been uninhabitable for more than a century, Merritt is ready to call it home until he realizes he has no choice. <laughs> With its doors slamming shut and locking him, locking behind him, Wimble House is not ready to let Merritt leave. Ever. Oh, Ooh. that does sound to lunch. Right? There's more. There's magic. There's, Ooh. they have to try to That's a fun one. let the house, let him go. So I propose, because you and I are not big fans of binging series, book series, right on top of each other, maybe that's our March-April book. Maybe. Because Akatar is a very easy read. You will fly through it. Yeah. I promise I will, you. I will say I wasn't a big fan of the idea, but with the Darker Shades of Magic series, I finished book two and instantly had to start book three. Mm-hmm. Because... I needed to know what happens. I mean, when you get to the end of Avatar, you do immediately want to watch or listen to the next book or read the next book because it ends on a whole wild cliffhanger. Oh, no. So we'll see when we get there. Yeah. I'm still TBD. 2% into. <sighs> Girl. I'm sorry. Halsey's reading A Darker Shade of Magic. Yeah. Yeah. The first book in. I just haven't gotten into it. That's fine. I need do to you know that, that one of the characters is gay? <laughs> sold have you, have you gotten um, that far no i'm two percent into the book i i just i like a lot of dialogue yeah because it keeps me engaged really opposite I'm opposite. opposite when all it's all description my eyes go i'm skipping and oh look someone's talking <laughs> i am literally the exact opposite that's so funny same I Mm -hmm. hate dialogue. It's so boring to me. World building sometimes, unless it's really... It's overwhelming. Gripping. I just don't... I will say also with The Darker Shade of Magic, there is a lot of building in the beginning. Yeah. It takes a few chapters to get into I need to give it the 100 pages. I just... do. 100 page rule. ...have been reading other things too. I guess so. Her smut. I'm... Work smut. (laughs) Did you just say work smut? Orc. (laughs) Orc? It was recommended as in lord of the rings orc but they're like hot <laughs> i need to see some fan art for me to believe that <laughs> that's right up there with the blue alien thing that went off during tiktok or during the pandemic oh no scully brought up some oh. <gasps> what is that green green one down okay, there with the titties stop looking at Oh. oh my goodness. Again, if you're not watching us on YouTube, oh, you boy. are missing out. Mm, oh, boy. No. oh no. Uh, I did read all of the blue alien books. There's like 20 of them. You read the blue alien and you slut shamed me for reading 50 shades of gray? Are you for real? Isn't there like 12 books in the alien series? More? Okay, you're not allowed to talk anymore. Yeah, they're <laughs> called kidding. Ice Planet Barbarians. Oh my god. <laughs> and there are... Oh, please, let me Google it. <laughs> I, said there... I thought there was only like 12. Stop it. Get some help. <laughs> no, no. Seek therapy. <laughs> How many? I'm looking Aren't they up. long too? No, they're very short. Okay. 
but there's some really interesting um what's it called appendages biology yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. as in multiples of things Question. sounds like a lot of work not so much multiples just add additives <laughs> so sick mm. <laughs> i'm concerned <laughs> oh please uh, the first thing that comes up is is ice planet barbarians inappropriate you really had to ask yourself bit. that. There's 21. There's 21. Yeah. You read all of them. This was in Bosnia. <laughs> oh, okay. That does explain a lot, actually. Also, I love that our pod lights are blue for yeah. this conversation. Um, and they're also very short. Yeah. Whatever you got to tell yourself. <laughs> On that note. On that note. Uh-huh. I am in the third book of the darker, the, the the, yeah, mm-hmm. um, the Shades of Magic series, Conjuring of Light. I'm, it's like a 600 plus page book. It's very large. It's I'm big. And- 52% nice. through. Ugh, I just, I know. <laughs> it's good. It is good. It. I will get there. I promise. I, I just feel like I can't talk about it at all I'm because sorry. I don't want to spoil anything for you. It's okay. You can spoil it. Once sorry. she gets to the 100 page rule and she gives up, we can talk more about it. <laughs> I'm not going to give up. You might give up. I might give up. Okay. I'm not going to give it's up. It's not a heavy get... dialogue book. Now that I know that about you, yeah. it's not a heavy dialogue book. It is a lot of action description, especially in book three. But it's so it will break your heart. You know what's a and long book is that the last book of the Court of Thorns books. Oh, yeah. It's massive. It's but like you fly through it. Huge. What were you going to say? Um, in book three, too. Also. In book three, also. They. There's more flashbacks of. Mm-hmm. Yep. What made these people who they are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It helps fill in some gaps. Yeah. I like how V.E. Schwab does that. She does that a lot in her books, actually. It's a good writing yeah. technique. Yeah. So, Did you have more updates for yours? Also? Um, I'm also reading. Oh, I haven't really started it, but I have Divine Rivals. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I started it. Downloaded it. it. I really can't get into it. I'm Maybe 10% it. in. Okay. I'm just like. Mur, mur. Um, yeah. Do you have to burp? Sorry, guys. I don't know. <laughs> I've just been reading a bunch of random stuff. I also like reread the first Hunger Games book last week. Oh. Just for funsies. Why not? Why not? Nostalgia. Still slaps. Well, thank you for your book club updates. Yeah. Book, I can't even talk. Book club updates. Anytime. TVT with KMB is up next. Mm-hmm. We're not going to show a PowerPoint this time because there wasn't much to talk about, but we do have some some threads to pull, pull from our brains. So Southern Charm is done. We watched both reunions, and I, f- I would like a little credit that most of my predictions from Contract Kitchen episode about Southern Charm came true. Yeah. Olivia said, goodbye, Taylor and Austin. I'm done. Mm-hmm. She, okay, first of all, at the end of part one of the reunion, did you watch till through the credits? I think so. When she walks off past Taylor to go to her dressing room. Yeah, what did she say? She, under her breath, to Taylor, just loud enough that the mic could pick it up and Taylor could hear her call her the C word. Oh, yes, that's right. Oh. Effing, effing C word. And then just walks past her. Didn't even look at her. I was like, damn. Yeah, that's Good cold. for her. Good Jeez. for her, though, honestly. Taylor did this really annoying thing the entire reunion and just didn't talk. She was silent. Yeah. And Shep went over to her in between scenes and was like, I'm really proud of you. You're doing what I did last season and... And staying silent. She's like, I didn't need the coaching, but thanks. <laughs> I'm like, bitch, you love the coaching. Don't yeah. even. Yeah. Please. She has the biggest daddy kink I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Hello. The reunion was just as un... Dry. It, yeah. As the entire season. Although. Mr. Jarrett. Oh, okay. JT. I am finding an affinity for him. I kind of like it. I like that he sticks up for himself, short Mm -hmm. king. And I like that he 
unabashedly just is in love with Taylor and he wants to put it out there. But Kelly had this great insight that she thinks he's doing it because he's writing his own love story for Mm -hmm. the cameras so that when they do finally get together, he'll be like, yeah, it was exactly as I hoped it would ever be. I've been saying this the whole time of how much I love her and she's finally... Loving she me finally back. gets it. Yeah. But she's not because yeah. that girl is in love with Shep. Mm-hmm. I started crying in the part two when oh. they when Andy kind of singled them out and was just like, is there love here? And Shep was so honest that, yeah, he. And quite literally shaking. Yeah, he was shaking. He's very emotional. and But I also think he's going through a lot of self life changes mm-hmm. that he's been avoiding for probably his entire life mm-hmm. and that is an intense thing to go through and, and I go through publicly go through publicly mm-hmm. go through with friends who've already kind of gone through it and he's behind yet he's all he's very much older than all of his friends yeah uh, and also add in getting sober i know well, well and that was like a, a big thing that he and um thought I wrote it down but I guess mm. I didn't um he wanted to address the group and say and this was in the first um reunion where he was saying I have essentially had a come to Jesus moment mm. of I've gone too far yeah. and I need to because during Bravo Con he was blackout drunk the whole time the whole time Austin Oof. was the one that took care of him oh, wow. and Austin was the one that enabled the absolute crap and he's been doing that since he became friends with Shep and it is very gross and scary to watch yeah and the fact that he takes I know Shep is an adult but he's an adult who has not grown up he is very much a Peter Pan Mm -hmm. and Austin totally uses that to his advantage and it's gross to watch very over that man I would like to redact my previous statements (laughs) about JT oh I no longer think he was a part of the insurrection (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but he watched but he watched uh <laughs> Austin on the other hand I'm just um and you know yeah this the part two made me i know right a little endeared to him a bit yeah, yeah. i still would love him to drop the taylor shit. just just let it go bud just i think he just thinks she's his perfect match she's not but he, there are other there are other women. I yeah. love that the majority of them are all who are not already in a relationship are starting to date outside of Charleston because yes. that town is a cesspool, clearly <laughs> yeah. incestuous cesspool. And we just need new blood. So I'm excited for next season because Olivia's in a new relationship with a mm-hmm. dude that she went on vacation with with Austin. Weird me out. That's a choice. Yep. Paige and Craig are going strong. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Madison is going. Why was she not on the? Paige is not a cast member of Southern Charm. Oh. She's only a cast member of Summer House and mm. sometimes Winter House, mm. and that's it, right? Mm-hmm. For now, gotcha. If she moves, absolutely, she'll become a cast member. But she's yeah. call, she's what Bravo calls a friend of a friend. Oh, so she can she if she was in town probably would have done a Rod, Rod Rodrigo sit down because mm-hmm. they came in for a couple minutes. But yeah. she wasn't in the season lock. She was working a ton during yeah. filming, so she was barely gotcha. there. Yeah. Did you have any other additions thoughts? No, I just I it was just more on the Shep thing, but we kind of moved on, but. I just, Mm -hmm. I'm sad for him because he is, I think, wanting to actually make this true change in his life, but Craig has somewhat written him off of, like, we've tried, we've gone down this path before, Mm -hmm. I've heard you say all these things before, so, like, I just don't quite believe you, and so for me to put myself back as close as we were is a hard thing to ask, but I'm hope. I'm somewhat hopeful that he'll put that Shep will put action to his words yeah. and mm-hmm. his friends will come around and hopefully support him through yeah. his journey. I it's think I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Craig he talked a little bit about it in the finale and in part one of the reunion that he has stepped back a lot from partying and from drinking yeah. and cut out a lot of liquor. And he just has a healthier mindset and a healthier family background Mm -hmm. where he can do that a little bit easier. I don't think people realize who Shep is. Yeah. Shep's family is one of the founding families of South Carolina, meaning they are one of the founding families of America. 
like his family line goes to the Mayflower and he Lord. never will have to work a day in his life because the majority of Charleston is owned and operated by his family line. And that's can be the said the same for Whitney. Whitney comes from an extremely prominent Charleston family. Mm. And that's why they are these Peter Pan boys where they just don't have to grow up because they get a check in the mail every single month mm -hmm. from the state of, of South Carolina that says, thank you for your services for being Shep. Yeah. It's wild. And so and when his parents die, he'll get all the money that his parents get into his bank account because... This is just how that works for families of that stature. So he, his family is just very old school Southern family. Like they don't talk about hard things. They don't get real. They just assume that everyone is fine and push everything under the rug. It's gross. And I don't think he will move on and really work on himself unless he finds someone who is professionally capable of doing that with him. And that's the that's why Craig, I think, is has continued to step back because he hasn't seen Shep do that yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In between seasons, would love to see Shep either go to a rehab or seek an intense amount of therapy mm -hmm. to work on his ish. Yeah. I think my only, like, the thing that bugs me with Craig is that he says that towards Shep right like he, I know then, what you're about to say mm -hmm. but Go then ahead. Mm -hmm. has yeah. a podcast with Austin yep is opening a restaurant opening with Austin. a restaurant with Austin and it's like I know the double Austin is Shep it. but a worse person like, I know Austin is Shep with no remorse and mm -hmm. no like self uh, realization realization of like that he sucks yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. or true ownership his yeah. ownership of things is always so fake feeling yeah mm -hmm. because he just turns around and does the same thing yeah i mm -hmm. love that he gets compared to shep and be mm -hmm. compared to younger shep because he is he yeah. absolutely is he is shep in mm -hmm. the making times five thousand and his f therapy is just for the cameras it's gross so to laughable. watch yeah yeah, I don't know. I, <sighs> Craig and Austin, I don't know. There's something to be said for who are these people really? Like, mm -hmm. what is their actual real, real life? Because I f yeah. feel like Craig wouldn't have aligned himself so closely in business with this person if he, if there wasn't something off the cameras that mm -hmm. proved to him that he was someone trustworthy to yeah, develop yeah. business with. Yeah. So yeah. we're missing something. Yeah. But who knows, dude, a part of it makes me feel like it's a fraternity situation yeah. where, oh, well, I was in a frat with you. Therefore, in our 30s, 40s and 50s, I'll always take care of you because you are my brother. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's it feels very fratty. But uh, mm -hmm. who knows what the actual reality is. But also, would they be going into business together if they didn't have the Bravo backbone? No. The. I mean, every single person on Bravo utilizes the fact that they no, are I know, on Bravo. I, no, I know they do. And that 100% like, makes You're sense. You're saying if like, you took that out. If you took that out. Would they actually be doing would this? Would you actually trust him? No idea. Yeah. And yeah. Then, but again, we don't know these people. But do I want to <laughs> go to the restaurant when it opens? Absolutely. Absolutely. I did. My secret agent went to South Carolina. She went to Charleston last yeah. week. And went to Sewing Down South. She got me a koozie because the pillows were $250. Well, no wonder it's an eight-figure yeah. business. Yeah. Oh, no. I think the Kroger pillows are a little bit different than the the headquarter pillows, but still. Headquarter pillows are probably, like, handcrafted by yeah. Greg himself. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> or, like, real, you she know, did get down some, or whatever. She got some really cute prints. Yeah. and the, But she said... But I for sure just bought the cases and not the pillows because mm -hmm. I will for sure be getting cheap Amazon pillows to oh, put absolutely. inside. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? But yeah, she got me a little koozie. How fun. She's having a blast. The second they got into town, ran into somebody from Southern Hospitality, which is hilarious. Oh my gosh, oh, that's hilarious. And on the note of Southern Hospitality, and this will be my last TVT unless you have anything else. I don't think so. Vanderpump is coming. Oh, yeah. Okay. Vanderpump premiered on January 30th. Now we're in the middle of February. So it'll be interesting to see. However, we will have a contract kitchen out and published by this time for the Vanderpump premiere. So go check that out. We're making, we made goat cheese balls with a disgusting sauce. And 
pumpkinis. Watch for our reactions. Yeah, our reactions are hilarious. Whew. And pumpkinis, Are the goat yeah. cheese balls something they serve? At, at sir. sir. Yeah. At sir. Okay. They are a Lisa Vanderpump creation. Oh. Yeah. Uh, on the note of Southern hospitality, in our thread on Slack, I put in the milkman. Yeah, and you put no nothing, no, no. whatever. I so, don't even want you guys to look at it. You can go Google it later. I'm just going to describe what the milkman is. Okay. <clears throat> there is a new man on Southern Hospitality this season who is working for the clubs for uh, Leva. Mm-hmm. His name is Oshin because he is, I believe, very Irish. Mm. He is very fit man, bronzed, Tarzan-like. He is on a good old site called OnlyFans, and he makes upwards of $10,000 a month because he pours and drinks milk. The reason that he does this is that it gives a sweat, wet, like quality, which can be a turn on for some people, but you can see the sweat because it's milk. So you can like see it rolling down his abs and rolling down his face and rolling down his arms. It is disturbing and genius all at the same time. He has girl. He has his two girlfriends, like friend friends, oh. come over and film him in the bathtub, in the shower, in the backyard, pouring Man, milk. There is something for everybody. There is something for everybody. <laughs> and he's like, it's so cost effective. I mean, a gallon of milk is like a dollar fifty. <laughs> The waste factor weirds me out just a little bit, but yeah. you know what? Get your bag, Oshin. It just blew my Listen, mind. I have thought so many. Hard I know about selling some feet pics. Get those footsies out there, baby. They're cute and they're tiny, little twinkle toes. Yeah, uh, yeah. It. I'll show you. Does some he pictures. ever um, change the type of milk? Yes, he chalky milk by request. Oh. <laughs> You can pay more. I'd like to see chocolate milk, please. <laughs> One of my favorite scenes. Pay more for oat. <laughs> it's One a premium milk. For dairy free. <laughs> I'm lactose intolerant. Could you please? <laughs> yeah, you could pay extra. Uh, he has different levels. And one of the girls that he works with when she first met him and he mm-hmm. confessed, he didn't even confess. He's yeah. very proud of the fact that he's the milkman. Of course I he would is. be too. She paid for the highest subscription just to be able to see what the hell was going on on there. And she's like, you know what? Because if you're not, not actually mad about, like, not mad about it, doing anything to yourself and you're just pouring, like, what is that going to harm? You know? Nobody. It's just him and some milk. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. The milkman. <laughs> When you put that in the in the thread, I I just kept reading it and going, "What is it? What could it possibly be?" Well, and I googled the milkman, and, and that's not weird what comes movies up. Yeah. Kept coming up like a horror mm-hmm. film. Yeah, and I was like, "Is she really talking about this right now?" Yeah. No, no, you're not. No, I'm not. No. And that's why I said Halsey tried to guess what it was immediately. No, I've just made a joke. Oh, okay. I made a because she just put the milkman, so I put. The paper boy evening TV, which is the full house theme song, yeah. <laughs> and nobody got right my over reference. my head. I got it's it, fun. but she had already commented <laughs> by you. the time, so I Thank you. left it. My yeah. response was, "You literally have no idea what I'm talking about," and I love that factor. <laughs> and boy, did we not know boy, what you were going to talk? You're about. welcome. Doesn't boy, isn't howdy. your life better? Ooh, you know whose sure. life is not better. <laughs> Little Miss Renee from Love is Blind Oof. suing the absolute crap out of the producing team from the last season yeah. because, quote, Carter, the guy that got written off the show, and she mm-hmm. kind of did too. What were all of his issues? He uh, homeless. Homeless, a drug addict. Uh, Jobless. Violent. Yep. Yeah. Physically. Physically and verbally. And emotionally. Violent. Um, and not vetted no, in at all. any way. That was fully like couch hopping. Like yes. did not have a home. Or a job to speak of. No. And this just goes to show, one, I'm so tired of Netflix reality TV because it is. They do not do their jobs. They don't do their jobs because they they want this to happen. Mm-hmm. They want yeah. conversation and clickbait and drama instead of actually trying to help people find love. Say what you want about the Bachelor franchise, but they vet the absolute crap out of the people that come onto that show for mm-hmm. this exact reason because they yeah. do not want to end up in a legal battle with someone. Yeah. But what's crazy? And they're, Go ahead. 
Oh. They're doubling down, Mm -hmm. and a new season of Love is Blind starts (gasps) February 14th. Okay, I did some digging. Oh. I do think you were right. I think it's an after the altar situation, but they're being Mm -hmm. really shady about it because they're just Mm -hmm. saying a new episode of Love is Blind February 14th, singular Mm -hmm. episode, because all of the true Love is Blind lovers Mm -hmm. have said, if you put an after the altar special together for the last season what on earth would we watch it was a nightmare and a half and it'll just be the one couple that got married yeah yeah and i don't want to watch them could care less i'm literally blacking out right now who lydia and oh yeah the 12 year old yeah yeah Mm -hmm. m m m martin no marvin marshall marshall no lydia and Milton. 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 Oh, yeah. Milton, Milton. Jr. Milton. Yeah. Yeah. Could don't Junior love them, but don't care at Junior all. And Junior. Yeah. I don't want to see an after the anything because mm-hmm. they're not going to be honest about what is actually happening. No. Yeah. I would love for the production team to actually have to own something. That would be incredible. But I am this close to just canceling Netflix because I could mm-hmm. care less after watching the Squid Game fiasco. And how gross that felt. And then mm-hmm. now watching the last two seasons of Love is Blind. Really the last season did it in for me. Yeah. But she, Renee has been trying to come out of her NDA. So she's mm-hmm. gone to a judge asking to be removed Re- from it. So yeah. that she can be truly honest about what's been going on. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they put her in so many dangerous positions. Mm-hmm. And then told her to keep going into those dangerous positions. Yeah. Is so disgusting to me. Yeah. Yeah. And I do not want to give any more spotlight to that show yeah what yeah. were you gonna say um there was a girl that they basically uninvited i saw her on tiktok mm-hmm. she had been reached out to be a part of um love on the spectrum oh and then they basically unreached out because she wasn't autistic enough that totally checks i wondered that about love on because the spectrum to uh norm like, not even normal yeah like not you know nerd. not autistic enough yeah. which is such a gross thing to even yeah. have a standard for yeah yeah, yeah. I yeah kind she of... wasn't far enough on the spectrum for them. Um, she had too much of a quote unquote normal life. Wow. That they, because she has a nine to five and like. And that's so messed up because. You can hold yeah. down a job. So yeah. That just totally proves that society mm-hmm. from a female perspective mm-hmm. with a female with autism, mm-hmm. most women with autism are finding out in like mm-hmm. their 30s and 40s that they have it because they've gone mm-hmm. undiagnosed because there are very few ways to figure out if a woman has autism because there is n- so little research and testing because oh, it's yeah. only been done on men. Yeah. So that just further further yeah. proves that our society is not ready to be accepting. Well, and it just showed that they were like you're not weird enough. Yes. Yeah. For exactly. Us to find entertaining. Yes. And find it cute that you fell in love. Yeah. Um, we can't um yeah, we can't exploit yeah. your neurodivergency enough. Yeah. Um Wow. Gross. It's not crazy for someone to love you. <laughs> so Wow. You know, That's crazy. we're not That's gonna crazy. put you on here. I did love down with love though. Oh, I did too. I never finished season one though. Oh, you have because to. we were watching it with Wubby. Oh yeah, mm. and we Streaming. fell behind. Yeah, that's okay. It is, it is good, but the exploitation again, piece of it feels it yucky. Yeah, I felt that after it feels the last like TLC. season. It does. Oh, it totally does. But you know what? We all freaking watch it. That's yeah. what's crazy. I'm rewatching Sister it. Wives right now. Oh, I know. I've but never watched got, all the seasons. Got, um, Christine got married. Christine got married. To David, they're so cute. they're very cute. Um, that was all my TVTs. Was that yeah. all your TVTs? Yes, <gasps> love it. Okay, let's talk about self care, self love, relationship to self. <laughs> Give yourself a little hug, a little squishy, and I'm gonna pull up our Get questions. Out of here with that heart. <laughs> Why do you, you put hate it, it so you much? Put it like this. It doesn't even, this doesn't look like a heart, y'all. This does, though. This looks like a heart. Also, my fingers just don't bend that way. Oh. I see, what's that girl's name on? This is my favorite. Bella who? Is that Korea? Yeah. Let's go to South Korea. (laughs) Okay. Um, Listen. I want to go to Japan. Mm -hmm. That, too. 
uh, Amy wants to go to Japan in 2025. Oh. I was like, that should be our goal, that we all get to go to Japan together in 2025. Fun. Here's my thing with going to Japan. What? I really want to be able to go to, like, the bathhouses and everything. You yeah, know, uh, onsens. The onsens. Um, I would have to basically wear a wetsuit because you can't show tattoos. Uh, oh. Because of the Yakuza. They don't, you're not allowed yeah. to show tattoos. Oh, they I give you, like, you can either choose to put um, these, like, bandages on that uh-huh. cover them or you can wear, like, full huh. long sleeve. Hmm. interesting i didn't yeah. know that maybe I've we should try and find a, a tattoo friendly it, one <laughs> they're they basically don't exist but no. i have heard a few people say that if you, like you don't need to worry about it too much if you are like not japanese or like like you don't you, yeah because i look very american yes i would probably be fine yeah but that it's still like a respect thing. A cultural yeah. respect yeah. would be to cover, cover. up. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're in someone else's world. Yeah. That makes but sense. I want to enjoy the waters. The waters. want to take in the waters. Yeah. Have you ever been to. Do you got to be Nike? Yeah. Yeah. Not, Have you ever been to a Nike spa? Close. Oh, you. I've never been to a Nike spa. Okay. I've also never been to a Nike spa. Here's a little spa. thing about me. Here's a little thing about me about self love and something that I very much miss now that we're not living in Washington. Mm-hmm. So. I have body dysmorphia and an eating disorder and (laughs) a lot of self-hatred runs through my body. Mm -hmm. But during the pandemic, I found, or right before the pandemic, I found an all-women's Korean spa in Linwood, which I will not name because they ended up being very transphobic. Anyways, in this spa, there are really cool rooms like a himalayan salt room where all the walls are himalayan salt they have a coal room where all the walls are coal and it helps detoxify like each room has a different benefit there's a cold cold room to like do the freezing yeah i've been in a spot like that yeah but then they have the nike space where it's a bunch of pools it's a bunch of hot tubs it's a bunch of showers and different kinds of steam rooms and it is a naked only time hands are up are you naked in the other rooms too no no no, no. No, ma'am. I would just be worried about my bits. Yeah. It's very... It is... <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Listen. Bacterias. It was uh, an immersion therapy situation. Because mm-hmm. I went. I always go by myself. I cannot go with friends. Mm-hmm. I do had... Uh, uh, girlfriends introduced me to this place. But mm-hmm. I did not go with them the first couple. I mm-hmm. didn't go that with them at all. <laughs> I would like see myself out of that situation. But... Like Owen, is he that day? <laughs> Whoopsies. <laughs> uh, you also can't go on your period. Because... Yeah, right, no, for obvious so. reasons. I went the first time. My brain was so delightfully empty of judgment and all of the loud voices because I was in a room with at least 50 other women, all different ages, all different body types, Mm -hmm. all different things hanging like wild. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, this is real. We mm-hmm. all have weird little bodies and weird mm-hmm. little rolls and weird little stretch marks. And every single one of us is just ourselves in this moment. Mm-hmm. And we're all just talking. To, like you can gab. Some people gab. Other people bring. So you're allowed to bring physical books. You can't bring electronics for obvious reasons. Yeah. And there are some pools where you can tell like the book talk girlies are all just in their corners with their little books above the water, like just trying to read our books and want to some alone time. And then there's the Gabby Gertrudes who have to talk down low. You're not supposed to talk very loud. There's also there's there's this sign on the wall that is a big ear. And if the noise gets too loud, the ear turns red and there will be little shusher girls that will come around with a sign that says, turn it down. (laughs) It's the best. Anyways. From a, I think my journey with self care really started in those years of beginning to live with James, living with a man for the first time since my father, and being in the pandemic yeah. and having so much time with mm-hmm. myself. Mm-hmm. I my self love self care journey started there, and the spa really did help. I kind of forgot all about mm-hmm. it, and I haven't found one in in California yet. I really wish they had something, but they just don't i'd have to go all the way to la for something like that and it would cost an arm and a leg the best part about this spa was it cost 20 bucks to spend the whole day there wow they had a restaurant that you can order from with Mm -hmm. all kinds of amazing vegetarian smoothies 
uh, pho, like tons of good stuff for your body. Shoes and shirt, not optional. Not well in the restaurant. In the restaurant, you need the you need the shoes and the shirt. <laughs> they give you little robes and little slippers. It's very nice, and Ew. then it, it, you kind of feel like you're in a hospital because everyone's wearing the same thing. It's very <laughs> yeah. strange. It's a very strange experience. They also have a tea room that you can like sit mm. in. You know those the floor yeah. seating. Yeah, so fun. Uh, but yeah, being naked around a bunch of women will really do wonders for your self esteem and your just relationship to body. Mm-hmm. But in this moment right now. How would you, Kelly, describe your relationship to yourself? Where are you at? Well, not well. <laughs> um, she is not well. I, when you were talking about all of that, it reminded me of a TikTok that I recently just saw of Megan Trainer mm. um, doing not this TikTok, but <laughs> a TikTok of Megan Trainer and. She had, she was doing this exercise, I couldn't think of that Mm -hmm. word, for herself to help find self-love where she would stand naked in front of a mirror and just look at her body for five minutes every day. Five minutes? Three or five minutes. That's a long long time. (laughs) But yeah, she was like, the first day I was nervous and I couldn't even, like I didn't want to Mm -hmm. look at. Because she was also saying it was also after she had had babies. So like yeah, stretch marks, she had babies. a C-section. Yeah. No. She's yeah. like, I have these scars that are not going to go anywhere. And yeah. I have mm-hmm. to learn to love them. Yeah. And, but by day three, I was more comfortable. Even just wow. in that short amount of time, just starting to look mm-hmm. at my body and mm. accept the scars and where they got me and what they brought me and wow. yeah. whatnot. Um, so I she, don't. Because she loves her kids so much yeah yeah i don't think i've ever really taken the time to know my my body like that too yeah because in my mind growing up it was taboo to Mm -hmm. look at don't be obsessed with yourself yeah yeah yeah, you're so obsessed with yourself vain vain vanity yeah so i never grew up doing that and i don't think i've done that much in my adult life but yeah i i'm trying to learn how to love my body and figure that out so yeah love that it's not great but but i'm here you're here and you're willing to look yeah because i do think self-love is internal and external mm-hmm. yeah and both journeys are very different yeah <laughs> yeah and in this year i'm trying to be more intentional about my body with how I'm treating it how I'm thinking about it how what I'm nourishing it with Mm -hmm. I want to eat healthier not intentionally but I've noticed I've been cutting out soda and stuff I started the past couple weeks just saying I'm only gonna drink one Mm -hmm. carbonated drink a day Mm -hmm. and I don't think I had anything yesterday or the day before so like I've just slowly felt like I I don't need. Yeah. And I feel better when I'm just drinking water. Isn't that funny? I did the same thing. We were talking about this, the meat situation. Mm -hmm. January 1st came and it was just like a switch went on where I was just like, I don't really want a bunch of meat. Yeah. I just, I don't even really want chicken. I've been finding more ways to put tofu into my diet, beans, and other plant products to find Mm -hmm. that protein. Because I always assumed while losing weight, one, you have to eat so much protein. Yeah. And it's really hard to find one cost effective protein mm-hmm. and two protein that is not so fatty and so heavy. Mm-hmm. And chicken only can do so much for you. You know, yeah. like you can only eat chicken in so many ways before you want to rip your own head off. <laughs> yeah. So and I feel better. The beans especially, I've been eating a lot of butter beans and trying Mm -hmm. to get that into my diet, and it feels really good. Those are delicious, too, if you make them crispy. Oh, yeah, girl. I can put them in the air fryer. Oh, don't have one of those, but I will. Put it in the broiler. (laughs) I will do that. Yeah. Make them. Uh, uh, Halsey Carlin, how's your relationship to yourself in this moment? Oh, she gonna cry? Oh, she gonna read her notes. She prepared. She prepared it. You gonna cry? No, I'm just removing something from my mouth. Cute. As you say, please. 
<laughs> no. Um, I think just to piggyback off yours a little bit, Kel, mm-hmm. um, I had to get to such a place of body neutrality right. before I could ever get to a place of body appreciation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like had I, having to get to a point where it's just like, I have a body. We talked about a lot of that in the body episode. Yeah. One of our first episodes. Yeah. Um, that it, yeah, that it was just, okay, I have a body. It gets me from this place to this place. Mm-hmm. Cool. Now I can look at it and mm-hmm. go, oh, I like this bit. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. those bits are nice. <laughs> you know. S- specifically. Specifically. I like my nose. I love your nose. I like you my boobs. You do have a very cute nose. Thank She's you. got a little button nose. I do. Boop. Um, I did once have someone take a picture of my nose for reference. And I felt real cocky Like Kelly with her lips? Yeah. No, no, for reference of they wanted to get a nose job. Shut up. Yeah. That is such a compliment. I know. I've never had that. I felt happen. so cocky after. Yeah, <laughs> I like, would too. Shoot, I'd tell the world that. <laughs> like, did you know someone's walking around with my, my nose? nose. <laughs> Someone wanted this. It's so cute. Um. Yeah. So most days I feel pretty okay about me. There are moments where I feel like my internal monologue is so mm-hmm. negative and dark and, um there's a singer who came out with a song last year um fat funny friend Mm -hmm. maddie something yeah um i've listened to it it's good yeah i i really enjoy her music but that song specifically of like i very much identified it with it i identified with the um feeling like i spent a lifetime measuring myself or comparing my body to the people next to me um and for me self-care comes down to more like where am I at inside of my brain right now Mm -hmm. so like we talked about in the last episode my crappy was that um my brain felt like a not nice place to be yeah for the last few weeks and um I had to you know do things to ground reground myself and get back to a good spot yeah um, pin that because yeah. one of my other questions is about mm-hmm. how long it takes you to mm-hmm. get out of that mode yeah and i want to go back to that what yeah. oh sorry go ahead uh, i just have one more thought to that was yeah. that i have done a pretty decent job of putting on like an air of confidence absolutely um for years your whole whole life (laughs) my whole life (laughs) but it really was literal years of fake it till you make it yeah yeah it was totally if i act confident i will be confident yeah and that and it's true like there are days where i'm like okay i've been told this looks good on me Mm -hmm. So it looks good on me. Yeah. And I will tell myself and I will act like it looks good on me. Until I believe it. Until I believe it. Yeah. Or until I can at least make the world believe that I believe it. Honestly, the theater kid in you. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Cast me in your... Um, I've done one commercial. (laughs) Hey, recently. Recently. Um, But yeah, it's a lot of fake it to make it. And I had to work hard to get myself here i think that's also where like self-care has comes down to for me is like it has been therapy yeah cutting people out of my life yeah um yeah loss of relationships to keep me alive and somewhat thriving yeah um it it takes work (laughs) it does not come easily the confidence doesn't come easily and it's not just taking a bath and washing your face. That no. is not yeah. self-care. Yeah. <laughs> That's routine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what does recharging look like in your... Nope. How do you take care of your emotional, physical, and psychological well-being in these moments or right now? Kelly. Um. So something that I feel like I'm trying to be better about and I think as I'm getting older learning that I need is to set boundaries Mm -hmm. of what will help me be the best person that I 
want to be yeah and not letting those get just pummeled <laughs> bulldozed <laughs> i feel like i growing up and even i think into college i was very much the yes girl where i did everything that everybody else wanted to do and i never could do anything for myself for yeah. just myself yeah so learning that i recharge by as i've said in an earlier episode a shower really yeah. resets me mm-hmm. yeah and so going to just i don't even have to, i could just stand in the water like i don't <laughs> i don't gotta need, do anything and maybe it's just that i need to be by myself and i just need a moment because i truly do mm-hmm. recharge when i'm alone but i don't yeah. think i was ever given the space to learn that that's what i really needed mm-hmm. until the how past would you have found out few years yeah mm-hmm. absolutely so so alone time yeah is becoming your self-care and and learning to stand up to say hey yeah. i'm just gonna go sit by myself yeah for 10 minutes like absolutely yeah, i'm just gonna maybe maybe read maybe be on my phone or maybe just sit there and just look into the dark yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> so i love it yeah. uh also I am figuring out that our ways to ground and center are very water based. Have you know that mm. noticed that? No. I do like a water. Yeah. I'm Which a- is all the more reason for us to live near water. I'm not, that's just that's what I'm saying. I desperately think that sometimes a good cold splash. Well, yeah. if you're an earth sign, which I am, you should ground yourself with water. Being by water, living in water, seeking water therapies, being on a lake. I'm a water sign. What the heck I'm an earth sign. Today? Huh? Water signs need water. So we all just need water? Yeah. Okay. Water is life. Not fire. That'll put them out. Yeah. I don't like fire signs. Oops. My husband. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, <laughs> the other thing um, that I was going to say was um, with taking care of, and I think that this kind of en- encapsulates the whole all emotional physical and psychological well-being part of like most recently I bought myself a new pair of pants yeah and that was something it's so stupid but it was something that I um was very much fighting because I gained some of all of my weight back and I had gone down pant sizes which is just Halsey and I were talking is just a number like yes we put so much weight on it weight on this number that (laughs) means nothing that is different everywhere you go yeah exactly Mm -hmm. and but the emotional toll that me getting dressed to go out in public Mm -hmm. where I couldn't just wear uh leggings or (laughs) gym shorts or whatever Mm -hmm. was so much i would just stand in the closet just hating myself yeah miserable because i would put on pants that were two sizes too small and Mm -hmm. feel physically ill of squeezing into these (laughs) no and because i didn't want to cave and give in and admit to the fact that i needed to go up a size (laughs) we all been there so and then the difference that Two pairs of pants have made it in my life. I'm like, listen, I'm going to wear so jeans cute. on a work day. I didn't even know and complimented her the yeah. last night. I, I was like, oh my gosh, your jeans are so cute. She goes, they're bigger. I said, do you feel more comfy? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 But I think just finally saying, okay, you've, I've been sitting in that for mm. so long because mm-hmm. I didn't want to give in. Yeah. For nothing more than my own self-esteem of yeah not wanting to cave in but honestly i feel better exactly and i know that i'm not gonna wear these forever and no but you need them right now and who cares i saw a tiktok yesterday of a girl who is maybe a size in our in normal people brains like a size 12 14 Mm -hmm. she tried on 12 pairs of jeans from tons of different Mm -hmm. uh makers mm-hmm. all like old navy you know normal every day not like aritzia ridiculous prices i'm not kidding you from sizes four mm-hmm. to 20 
she either fit or like she fit in size fours and then would try a size 16 from another store and then they wouldn't even button but the size four would work it makes no sense and i'm so tired of that weight emotional Mm -hmm. weight Mm -hmm. being put on us just because an industry can't grow the fuck up i'm sorry but seriously yeah and yet it's 2024 men's pants fine by measurement oh and are the same everywhere at every company yeah. And I swear it is just to make money off of women shoppers. And it drives me mm-hmm. absolutely insane. Yeah. So it is just a number. It yeah. also is so temporary. Mm-hmm. And your body fluctuates. You're aging. You're in your 30s. Your weight is going to yo-yo a little bit because your hormones are changing your by hormones. the minute. Your yeah. hormones. Yeah. You know? And yeah. That. It just. I don't know where I was going with that sentence, but each pillar, the emotional, yeah. I could cr- like stand in the ki- in the kitchen, stand. <laughs> that was part that of the problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, stand in my closet and just hate myself yeah. and speak so negatively, mm. think so negatively to myself about how I'm going to feel for the rest of the day. I'm going out for an hour and then I'm going to come home and take these off immediately. Right. Physically, I honestly felt so dis like just uncomfortable, gross, yeah. like yeah. whatever. And then we're going out to eat. So then I'm like, okay, I'm already, these are already tight and yeah. I'm going to eat and then I'm going to be even more miserable. And then just the psychological of loop of, yeah, yeah. the, the constant loop of like you're, I'm basing all of this off of, one article of clothing yeah Mm -hmm. totally oh boy i gotta find other things to make myself happy and i can't put so much absolutely my self-worth in and being comfortable and feeling cute yeah should definitely put more Mm -hmm. thought and effort and energy into Mm -hmm. that and not how tiny can i make myself Mm -hmm. there was a time in linwood that I we were I removed all mirrors that could show my body for a good two and a half years. Really? We didn't I didn't have a full length mirror until we moved into Loma Linda, the new California apartment, mm-hmm. because our closets are mirrors, mm-hmm. those awful sliding yeah. mirrors. And yeah. that was the first time that I was like, oh, my God, that's what my body looks like. Mm-hmm. And at that point, I had already lost 50 pounds when we moved there Mm -hmm. and I didn't recognize myself and then lost another 20 pounds after that. And my, that my body dysmorphia flare ups in the last year have been insane. Yeah. And then I went to, well, got married and looked the way I looked, which I didn't look like myself in my, you know, mind's eye. And then a couple months later, I'd lost a little bit more weight again and went to a wedding in Maine and I hadn't seen a ton of people from that group of friends in almost two years. Oh, wow. So the last time they saw me, I was very heavy. And the double takes of glances at me were Mm -hmm. unhinged. It felt so strange like that I was unrecognizable. But in my mind's eye, I'm like, I'm just the same person, right? Like, And my mom's like, no, (laughs) you don't look like yourself at all anymore it's very unnerving almost it's an odd process to go through yeah but mirrors i found have helped more ground myself more in reality of where my body is at Mm -hmm. so i'm trying to embrace them a little bit more but they can be big enemies too yeah Mm -hmm. how do you take care of your emotional physical and psychological well-being miss carlin um I I'm like you guys need to be with people. Hmm. Um, I need like I don't alone time and I are not really great friends. Um well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> like for me, alone time looks like three different stimulants happening. <laughs> like the TV is on, there's a light on, like there her phone, my two phone. screens <laughs> earlier. When you guys weren't in here, yeah, oh, no. I was playing solitaire on my computer. Yeah, <laughs> I was playing a different game on my phone. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow, you really say I don't want to spend any time in here. Yeah, yeah, I spend time in there when I have to, like in therapy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in there, I I don't know. Like I, 
in the car is usually when I spend the most, and I do have a decent commute. Like I drive do. 30, it takes me almost 40 minutes to get home from work because of traffic. So those are the times where I usually like, first of all, I can't look at a device. Yep. <laughs> I, there, there's less options for distraction. Yeah. Totally. Um, so I, yeah. Although it, it did get so bad. Like my avoidance of being alone with yourself, with myself, to the point where I put a waterproof thing for my phone in the shower. Oh, <laughs> okay, I gosh. wondered. Yeah. Excuse me. Did you hear that? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. I wondered because I, mm-hmm. but I get that though. There was a mm-hmm. time during the pandemic where it's when I got into Love Island. I mm-hmm. needed something playing at all times because yeah. I could not be with myself. And mm-hmm. then I discovered uh cbd and then i discovered <laughs> weed and i was like cool i like myself now because she's quiet up there <laughs> yeah. yeah my brain is really kind of never quiet yeah same except for when you see me fully disassociate and my, <laughs> and it's gone into static mode up there it's like, uh, i call it brown noise mode <laughs> yeah for sure i know it well yeah how funny um, i love how different we are it's man. usually when my meds have worn off <laughs> yeah and i'm just going uh... <laughs> i love it uh okay so people so yeah being around people um when we were gonna get into talking about like routine yeah yeah um for me routine is really important especially being very neurodivergent yeah routine and uh a consistent routine is super important for me totally um when it gets altered (laughs) my friend don't like it yeah things get a little scary well let's because i haven't answered this question either because my answer is routine yeah that's how i take care of myself in Mm -hmm. each of these categories i need a routine for my emotional self my physical Mm -hmm. self and my psychological self yeah so let's just dive into that do you want to say the thing you were going to say yeah, so for me, a day off, uh, mm. it looks a lot like I wake up, still washing my face, still yeah. putting makeup on or doing my hair. Usually, I don't wear makeup on my days off Yeah, because I wear it every day to the office. Well, for those who I don't like to know, my... Halsey can bake a face. I can bake a face. She can bake a face. And she'd be baking that face for since high school, really. Yeah. And I it's got really into YouTube. Very. And makeup. Artists, artists on youtube yeah, yeah. Got, got real up in there <laughs> if you want to know anything about makeup beauty guru drama from the years of like 2010 to 2017 oh so i'm there <laughs> so or 2020 really jeffree star mageddon all the stuff that happened with that and i mean that's shane dawson a lot more recent i'm talking like oh, even before oh yeah there's beauty guru drama has been happening since for a while yeah the beginning anyways Anyways. (laughs) so um doing my hair getting going to my favorite coffee shop even if it is by myself yeah it's still slightly social like there's still people and it's outside of just the four walls of my bedroom or my office you know at work like my office my, the desk i sit at up front <laughs> the office <laughs> the, the office. office the office not my office um <laughs> don't have one of those yet um yeah i love that yeah one day one day mm-hmm. one day i'll have a corner suite i don't know Ew, you. yeah um but yeah so just getting out is usually a big piece of it too like mm. you just need a change of scenery i usually take my laptop to go work on pod stuff or yeah whatever that looks like for the day um her coping mechanisms are because she doesn't live alone yeah. have you noticed that mm-hmm. i yeah. can't wait to see you live alone <laughs> because you will craft new coping mechanisms that yeah. take place at home because you have your own space yeah and it will be it will open up whole yeah. new worlds for you well i mean it yeah. did look different when i lived alone in bosnia yeah but um, like consecutive I, yeah. years yeah. of honing your own self yeah. away from everything yeah. and everyone else it changes you significantly for sure the um, reason we brought up routines mm-hmm. was because kelly found this awesome yeah. tiktok really connected featuring mrs mel robbins whom i am a little obsessed with I was supposed to know who she is. you don't know who mel robbins is i don't 
To be honest, I didn't know who she was before I watched it either. Okay, that's yeah. another topic for another time. Scully, could you please bring up the TikTok? We're going to play it for you guys on the show because it's just audio. It's an interview that she did on another podcast talking about her daughter, right? Mm -hmm. I believe that the reason why you want to be happier is because you miss being happier and you can only miss things that you know. I'll give you a simple exercise that you can do that I did with one of our daughters. She dealt with the depression and the grief by drinking herself into the ground and had a complete breakdown. I said, okay, well, here's what you, let's start here. First of all, I want you to have this breakthrough where you realize you do know what you need to do. So take out a piece of paper and I want you to draw a line down the center. When was a time that you felt happier than you feel right now? Now on the left-hand side of the paper, I want you to write down all the things that were happening in your life then. Like, what did your day-to-day -day life look like? So you start to write. I left the house at 7 a.m. I was at school all day with my friends. I went to lacrosse practice. I exercised every day. And I'm like, great, now write down what your life looks like now. I sleep till noon. I drink every day. I don't leave the house. I don't exercise. I'm like, compare mm -hmm. and change accordingly. Mm -hmm. Your whole life is about those little things that you do every day. And if you're not happy, get out a piece of paper, draw a line down the center, and write down the things that you were doing when you were a happier or healthier person and change accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. So Mel Robbins is an extremely popular life coach mm -hmm. who has built quite the platform for herself, for herself. A lot of people call her the female Tony Robbins. Mm. They are not related in any way mm. or married to each other, but she has created... Um, She's, I think, friends with him or adjacently mm -hmm. knows him and has networked with him and talked to him about her business. But I love her. Her podcast is incredible. And I love her relationship to her kids. And she has them on her podcast every once in a while, too, to talk about stuff like that. But mm -hmm. I love that Kelly brought that up because it's a, that act, that practice. I didn't had never seen the Mel Robbins podcast, but I've done that paper act mm -hmm. myself. So I, yeah, I've done it. In with my therapist. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. so helpful to understand the importance of routine because I think when I'm in my darkest of darkest, mm -hmm. it's because I have rid routine out of my life and my day to day and I do it in a punishing mode. Like I it's almost as if I know that's the thing that can help me and stubbornly I don't want to use it right now. Mm -hmm. And the second that I develop a routine again, the happiness factors go through the roof and I just feel more in sync with everything. Um, I said, a well-rounded routine is something that is honed over many years of life to find what works best for you. And I fully believe this is the key to most self-hatred issues, but also one of the best ways to seek self-care. So on that note, what is your daily routine when you are happiest and on track with both your dreams, your self-work, and just work in general? What does that look like for you, Kelly? Um, so I didn't write down like 7 a.m. I wake up. <laughs> yeah. No, you're fine. But I think I feel happiest when I can balance the being productive and getting things done with also being able to relax a little bit. Yes. If I spend a whole day just sitting and doing absolutely nothing, I beat myself up. Same. So much. And yet you need it. You need it. And and it's called rest. <laughs> yes. And I'm the only one. The things that I have going on in my head, I have created for myself. Absolutely. But my never-ending to-do list in yeah. my head that I can't shut off just grows and I know that if I spend all day mm. that light went out. My light just died. So did mine. Oh. It's okay. <laughs> Mine's still on. <laughs> um if I spend the day just in that I'm mad. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. At yourself. Yeah. That you haven't done anything. But if I'm a little just a tiny bit productive, if I accomplish one thing on my list, even in a restful productive day yeah whether that's just doing laundry that yeah. day or taking a shower taking a shower <laughs> whatever it is then I'm not as mad but I need that balance to have a little bit of both because totally if I sit in it all day then I'm mad if I'm non-stop mm -hmm. going 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 all day I'm tired and I'm a little grouchy yeah. and so I need that balance of 
the Libra in me. She loves a balance. I totally connect with that 100%. But we did talk about this in the Bed Rod episode that that is necessary. Yeah. I'm sorry, but we got to rot sometimes. And that that is a form of self-care and use it wisely. i trying not to overindulge with it because yeah. 2020 through 2022, girl, I didn't get out of that bed for a while. Yeah. <laughs> I the world was falling apart and so was Bailey so and then I found weed and I bed rotted yeah you know Mm -hmm. uh Halsey what does your daily routine look like when you're the happiest and on track so I started a little bit uh, yeah going to the last coffee shop um sitting a lot of it has to do with um cohabitating with people like it doesn't even need to be like tomorrow one of my good friends is coming over just to body double yeah, yeah, because yeah. I need to clean my room. Yeah, you do. But we want to spend time with each other. But my room is a hot mess right now. Mm-hmm. And then also Bailey just gave me more clothes. So I need to figure out where I'm supposed to put those because I don't have any more room in my closet. But I'm going to figure it out. You're welcome. Um, maybe get rid of the clothes that don't fit me. <laughs> um, a form of self-care. Yeah. <laughs> throwing away past halsies that don't fit this body anymore past halsies ooh, yeah that was deep mm. Mm. poetry okay so um, body doubling body doubling humans. works really well for me i'm not surprised though it like something clicks where yeah. i'm like i just need you to sit there and yeah. maybe we talk and maybe you help i don't really need your help right i just need you to sit there so that i am not alone <laughs> Yeah. Do you also think it's like a, an accountability act where someone is watching you do the thing you need to finish the thing that you're doing a because someone's bit, watching yeah. you? Okay. It's not so much that they're watching me. I think it's just that they're aware. Yeah. You, you know? Yeah. Um, sometimes I'll turn on like a, a YouTube video sure. of someone else, you know, organizing. Oh, their, really? Yeah. Sometimes. I mean. That is kind yeah. of body doubling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of like <laughs> virtual body doubling. Like yeah. I'll, I'll watch someone, you know, doing their skincare routine or whatever while I'm cleaning or whatever that looks like or. Yeah. But yeah. Love. Uh, My routine is the most Virgo routine you've ever heard of. We're talking there are things that I do within the morning, within the afternoon, within the night, and I separate them. I have to-do lists of those things. I plan, I iPad kid at night and I plan out my next day. I feel on point and connected with both my iPad and just like my internal self. Mm-hmm. When my routine is routining, <clears throat> it feels so good. And when we first started the podcast, one, I had no routine because I had lost the thing that made my routine, which was my career Mm -hmm. and was starting a new career and didn't know what that would look like and was traveling. So boy, (laughs) episodes one through about just skip it. 10. I was a mess. I was a mess. Just skip it. (laughs) Just one and two. Just one and two. Okay. Now let's talk about the opposite. Yeah. What does it look like when you don't have that day-to-day routine? When I, For me, it's when I'm manic because I deal with some lovely depression. So my manic episodes are usually triggered by my routine being thrown out the window and I don't have the gumption to go get it back. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like? And how long do you think on average you stay in that time period, in that rotty mode? I think I... I feel like I kind of started to answer this a little bit in the last, if I don't keep up with the routine, then I will end up beating myself up mentally to say like, why didn't you do the thing (laughs) that you knew you should have been? Yeah. So I'm definitely extra moody. I think I take it out then also on Jansen because he's here and the closest he's here in proximity. (laughs) Line of fire. And he's the one that knows me the best, and yeah. he doesn't deserve it. Oh. So sorry. But now I think <laughs> I, yeah, I think I will take it out on whoever. Yeah. Because if it's not hitting home enough for me, then I need to bring someone else into my misery. Woo. And sorry. Uh, Bravo. Um, 
Because, yeah, it's just because of this mental strain that I put on myself when I could say, you know what, you weren't as productive as you wanted to be, but who cares? Because, again, you're the one that made this list for yourself. No. And it will all get done eventually, just not exactly how you want it to be. Exactly. It always does. And I need to get out of this mentality that not every day needs to look the same level of productive, Mm -hmm. that that productivity can flux and go in waves I just realized that I do the same exact thing to James though yeah if I've had a day like that where I feel like I am not my most productive self Mm -hmm. then every little thing that he hasn't done I poke at which is so messed up yeah so sorry my love but it's because there are people Mm -hmm. and they're the only ones there 24 7 365 yeah and they have loved every part of us and no one else can say that. So therefore, they kind of are in this line of fire mode. And I'm so sorry. I will say it most of the time is the PMS demon. She do play a factor. Nine out of ten times. Yeah. PMSing. Every time I have like those little rage mm-hmm. girl moments, it's he goes, are you PMSing? Yeah. And I'm like. Yeah. It's also freaking me out that Jansen now knows when I'm PMSing just based on if I'm being grumpy. Because he's got me down to a yeah. key. Yeah. Frightening, but also awesome. Yeah. Uh, Halsey, what does it look like for you when you're out of that and when you're in a rut? And how long do you like give yourself permission to stay in the rut? How long does it last? I don't live with people <laughs> who can bring me out of it right now. Yeah. That's honest. They and- don't have the space for that. Yes. And so that's hard. Yeah. Yeah. So I have to do it. Yourself. Just by myself. Yeah. Um, That's so hard. Yeah. 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 I get that fully. Mm -hmm. And it is also. (laughs) The camel's cameling. (laughs) Archie needs a drink. You can't hear it on the mic. You can't. can't? Oh, I thought you could pick it up. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I don't want to put words and no, thoughts okay. in your head or words in your mouth, but mm-hmm. the fact that the next question is who do we go to recenter ourselves? Mm-hmm. Kelly and I obviously go to our partners because mm-hmm. we do live with them. They are our 24 seven person mm-hmm. and very lovingly and luckily we have people that are safe to do mm-hmm. that with right now and have space to do those mm-hmm. things for us and with us and you just don't have that in that season and that's yeah. so it's not okay and it's not that the people i live with like aren't safe it's just that they don't have the space or capacity for me to like unload unload in that way yeah um so yeah i get that do you want tissue Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Two episodes in a row. Well, here's the thing, though. I was in that season of life as well mm-hmm. where I had to go to myself to recenter. And you end up inherently creating this muscle that you didn't think you knew you could have or, or could utilize. Mm-hmm. And that will go far in your life that you can trust yourself to pull you out of that. And I kind of, I don't love this season for you, but I do love that you have to go through that right now without a partner because Mm -hmm. it is something that you can't just build overnight. Mm -hmm. And you 40 year old, you will be very, very proud that you did that work and you went through the season Mm -hmm. to make those muscles. Yeah. But it's a sh- season, I understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just, um, I think I, I, pre getting the opportunity to go to therapy, Halsey got really used to just sitting in it. Yeah. And so choosing to not do that mm-hmm. is harder. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, it's it- <laughs> way easier to just sit. Yeah. 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 I have a movie for her to watch. Oh, God. The Ghibli one that I told you about last night. (laughs) Which one? It's wild. Spirited Away. I've seen Spirited Away. Oh, okay. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah. So I was explaining to Kelly last night the scene where she pulls the thorn and all the junk out of Mm -hmm. that monster. Yeah. 
that she's bathing. This is so mm-hmm. random if no one has seen this movie. <laughs> so sorry. But our conversation last night, mm-hmm. Halsey and I had a really hard combo that mm-hmm. I'm so freaking proud of us for having, all three of us really. And I told Kelly, it was like I took the thorn out of me, the mm-hmm. creature, unloaded it all so that we can start mm-hmm. at baseline. And that is such a hard thing to do, especially when we don't know if you are in the in the brain space that you're in or not, or Mm -hmm. if you've had the chance to have routine and feel strong before you have that Mm -hmm. kind of conversation. And I'm very proud of how you handled that last night. Yeah. Um, I was like, uh, emotional regulation is really hard for me. Mm -hmm. Um, especially when it comes to like sadness, anger, grief, like those things. Like I just am learning how to build those tools. Obviously I'm only 27. Yes. That's something you learn throughout life. Yes. Um, Mm -hmm. But I've realized a lot more recently that I like what sets me off. Yeah. Um, And, and it is often and it sucks because I just end up feeling like, I don't know, not ungrateful, but like, I don't know how to explain it. When someone doesn't react the way my mm. brain pre planned for them to react, <laughs> yeah, it sets me off in a way that I can't explain. And then I end up just feeling like such a shit person because I'm like, you didn't respond the way that. Um, I, I, t- I, t- I, told, I told you to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I already wrote the script. I need you to stick to it. Theater kids. <laughs> Say the lines kids. as they're written. Yeah. <laughs> Say the lines as written and in the voice that I imagined you would say them in. Yeah. yeah. And, and with the tone the program. that I wanted you to tone it as. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And stick to the program. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that is a... That is a 20 something lesson. Yeah. Faux show. Yeah. By your 30s, you'll just be like, you know what? You're crazy. So <laughs> um, it's fine. <laughs> I accept you. It's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I just keep getting to the point where I'm like, I think I'm the crazy one. We all are. Yeah. TBH. Yeah. You, Mrs. Carlin. Who do I go to? Who do you go to to find your baseline again? So I did write, I think I go to Jansen because he is the person that knows me the best. Yeah. He knows what I need to hear when I maybe don't want to hear it. <laughs> yeah. And knows some, somewhat how to um, deliver. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes not he's very gentle. <laughs> he's very matter of fact. Extremely. And... Factual. To the point. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think that when, so when I need to be brought back down to reality, mm-hmm. he is the person that I end up going to. But to that point, kind not to that point, I also wrote down that something I feel like I'm trying to, I don't know if I've done it. Yeah. But something I want to do is be that person for myself Mm -hmm. where I don't necessarily need him not that I don't want him but that I don't I always go to him a lot because I'm a dramatic person sometimes all the time (laughs) (laughs) and um it's not fair to him for me to always be going to him with my problems when he I think for himself and I'm I shouldn't be speaking for him but I'm going to um (laughs) he's very much of the mindset uh, he goes to himself I think for resetting he does and so there's not the balance of I'm doing this for you so you can do it for me it feels a lot of the time that I'm just always the one that's like totally Make me better, please. Yeah. And it's not fair to him. And I, I also want to be strong enough to do it for myself. Not to genderize it. Yeah. But men do 
not have <laughs> most men do not have this piece in their brain where they question every single aspect yeah. of what they're thinking what they're doing what they are what people expect of them that's why I do go to James because he mm -hmm. he can compartmentalize which mm -hmm. I've never been able to do Same. will never be able to do because Same. trauma and I need him to just lay it out for me mm -hmm. And I agree with the, that's just not fair to him. However, they chose to be our person, continue to choose to be our person. And I know that there is love in that rep repetitive nature of mm -hmm. needing to go to them. However, I get the, I get your piece of the not fairness and I'm going to bring up some lyrics that will make you cry. The reason that I love the Billie Eilish song, What Was I Made For, yeah. is because of one mm -hmm. section of it. I'm gonna cry. This is the. Uh, I think. I, okay. Come on. When did it end? All the enjoyment. I'm sad again. Don't tell my boyfriend. It's not what he's made for. What was I made for? And she puts the emphasis on the I when she sings it. And I lost it mm -hmm. <laughs> when I heard the song for the first time because I didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I had already knew the entire song and all lyrics before I saw the movie. Same. But that section just resonated the crap out of me because it's so true that your partner that chooses to do life with you as a woman being married to a man it has this inherent quality, especially of a woman who has gone through lots of hard things, mm -hmm. that she has to put that weight on her partner to be able to hold it with them mm -hmm. and that's not what they he's made to do but damn does he do it yeah. all the freaking time yeah i'm so grateful for that but i agree i think it is a lifelong lesson to stretch and grow those muscles mm -hmm. of being able to really and truly fall on your own backbone mm -hmm. <laughs> and and deal with your burdens in your own ways but it's a learned life Quality. And it is not something that, yeah. no offense to our moms and dads, but we were not taught how to do that. We yeah. were taught how to lean on God and lean on a Bible and lean on a religion that for some of us in this room doesn't fit the narrative anymore. Doesn't is not what I was made for. I was not made to be a Christian wife and a Christian mom, a, qu a, a Christian, Christian mom. A question, yeah. mom. You know, and I do feel a little robbed that I didn't have someone telling me, you know what, the power to armor up and be a confident person and to go fight for the things that you want to fight for actually lives within you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't live within this am amorphous, odd, godlike character mm -hmm. from a Bible. Mm. Yeah, all comes back to religion, you know? <laughs> Any other f closing thoughts on self-love, self-care? We will definitely talk about this again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're doing it. Mm -hmm. We're doing it. We're doing I it. I washed my face almost every day this week. Samesies. Last night I did get home kind of late and did use a wipe. A wipe. <gasps> I have wipes in my nightstand for Same. that exact reason. So at yeah. least I can take it off. Yes. It doesn't feel great, no. but at least I took off my makeup yeah. or at least I yeah. like wiped my face. Yeah. I also have, um, <laughs> just, <laughs> I've never said this, butt wipes mm -hmm. in my nightstand for my feet. <laughs> okay. Cause sometimes my feet are dirty, but I don't want to go yeah. take a shower. I just, yeah. but I can't get into my bed with dirty feet. You so can I'll just call those wipes. Yeah, but they have... but they are specifically butt wipes. I <laughs> they're tissue wipes. <laughs> Sleep with socks on. Wipes yeah, we know. are universal. You freak. Every day in yeah. Arizona. Yeah, could never. Absolutely not. Mm -mm. Um, no, my wipes are also for emergencies only. Yes, <laughs> they're for the like last night. I just got so into tired. bed and I was like. I can't get back. I can't get back. I up. can't get back. Yeah, up. I can't. I can't. Yeah. I can't. Hundred percent. Um. Oh, I'm so gosh. just like physically and emotionally <laughs> exhausted. And I had already cried off 90% of my exactly. makeup last night. You're welcome. Thanks. <laughs> um, so Thanks. it really didn't. Um, 
Um, both of my thumbnails are off now. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, it's no. been a day. It's been a day. Hey, thanks Hi. for talking about the self with me today, ladies. Mm -hmm. We love to see it. Love to see it. Mm -hmm. Love to see you guys. Love to see you guys on the YouTube. Hey, guess what? As of today, which is not the day you're watching this, will we hit 150 subscribers on YouTube? Hey, oh, thank you for joining us and watching us now that you are here at the end. If you could please engage in some way, tell us how you find routine and mm -hmm. how you get out of ruts. I would love to hear about how others do this thing called self care and self love. Yeah. Did you read Ice Planet Barbarian? Oh, dear God. <laughs> Bring it back. No. If you want to read with us, we're reading A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass in February, March. So for the rest of Love Month, come um, frolic with the fairies in this fantastical series. That just makes me think of Insidious. Oh, no. That movie scarred me. Hey, Sister by Contract. That's me, Kelly. Thanks for being here. Yeah. I'll love you. Sister by Blood. Hi, Demi. Halsey. Halsey. I love you. I love you. Thanks for being here. Hey, Kel. Love you. Yeah, you love guys you. never get to say that you love each other, so. Say so you love her. I love you so much. I love you too. I don't know why I <laughs> sounded like, um, uh, uh yep, Fozzie the Bear. There it is. Oh, <laughs> love a Fozzie the Bear. I'm Bailey. You've been listening to Blood and Contracts. We'll see you on the next one for finale. Season one finale. Holy moly. <gasps> Should we did we dress up like it's a Bravo finale. Oh no. Let's talk about that offline. Sorry. We'll see you on the Bye. next one. Bye. 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 Look at my nails.